receive my worship all of my worship
Children magnify you in 
everything that stands in your way. Let us leave here changed, loosed, free, strong, and strengthened in your name. We give you honor and we give you glory. We say yes to whatever you want to do tonight. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Every heart say amen. I want you to get your Bibles and stand on your feet as we read the word of the Lord tonight. I honor the Lord for our state overseer in his absence and all of you preachers and overseers and saints of the most high God. Will you look at your neighbor and tell him you look good? And I thank God for you. Can, can we go hood for a second? Can we go St. Louis? Can you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, on my mama, on my hood, you look fly. You sure look good. Now hug them. Say, I just wanted to let you know that. Come on, show some love today. I just wanted to tell you that before I tear up this robe. I just, just wanted to get that out the way before I disrupt the whole row. I want you to get your Bible, stand on your feet, and let's go to Acts, the 16th chapter. Acts, the 16th chapter, and we're going to start at the 25th verse. It's a very, very, very familiar passage of Scripture. The Lord is going to use this Scripture tonight to posture us to, to end this year strong and to start the next decade off right. Acts, 25, uh, Acts 16 and verse 25, when you have it, say amen. And the word of the Lord reads, and at midnight. I got to read that Kojic. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, somebody say suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. I'm going to stop reading right there and the word of the Lord is blessed. I want to talk to you tonight from the topic, I am a disruptor. If you're in agreement with me as you sit down, say, I am a disruptor. Now tell your neighbor, unless I'm going to disrupt this whole row. I didn't gave you all the cuteness and I didn't gave you the accolades. But tonight, I've got to be Paul and Silas for my section. I've got to be Paul and Silas for my row. This message tonight is a prophetic message. And God's going to use it to set the tone and the expectation for your next decade. And I've been prophesying this all year long and I'm not going to stop until I get out of this year. So I'm going to tell you what I've been telling everybody else. I prophesy into this atmosphere that your next is now and there will be an accelerated overflowing open season. I'm talking about doors opening that no one can shut and rivers flowing that no one can stop and dams break that no one can prevent. I submit to you today that you didn't just haphazardly end up in this room tonight. God said that he has not changed his mind about your future. In spite of everything that has gone on and everything that's yet happening with you, the hand of the Lord is still on you. God has not left you. He has not abandoned you. And he is not finished with you. I know you're looking at the timeline and it looks like 2019 is over. God is not finished with you yet. He still has 31 days to do what you've been waiting on him to do. I need somebody to help me in this room tonight. Now, he still has time to do what he said that he could do. He's not finished with you. And so you cannot allow the difficulty of this season to persuade you to thinking that you've been thrown underneath the bus and set up to fail. 
You are as close to God now as you've ever been. Psalms 34 and 18 says, The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and save such as have a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Let me assure you tonight that the hand of the Lord is on you. That means everything around you is relative to your future. Some of you need to know that the opposition was good for you. You you know the fight was exactly what you needed to get to the place where God could trust you with what he's planned to give you. The things you've had to confront over these years and that have confronted you were divine, not demonic. God was there the entire time overseeing the entire process and the struggle you've been in was good. David put it this way in Psalms 119 and 71. It was good for me that I was afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. What you've been through taught you something. What you've been through increased your ability to trust God in the midst of turmoil and devastation. You've been set up by God. Because he's been working in unusual ways. And what looked like a breakdown to you is really a setup for a breakthrough. Everything that has transpired up until now, God was personally preparing you for what he's revealing on your behalf. So tonight, we have to disrupt your current status. There are many of you that are in this room that are tired. You're frustrated. You've given all you had to 2019. But I'm here to encourage you and to push you to give God one more push and to give him one more chance and to give him one more yes tonight we disrupt your current status I woke up today with the same righteous indignation that rose up in Paul I rose up, it rose up in me and I decided that I was not going to let the devil harass me. Who am I talking to today? You said I am not going to let the devil harass me and make fun of my faith. See, what the enemy wants to do is he wants to disrupt your spirit so he can prevent you from going into prayer. Let me talk about the text. Because there was a spirit of divination in this woman that was following Paul and Silas around. And so they realized what was going on and turned around and rebuked the spirit out of her. And everybody got mad because now they can't profit from this woman. She was harassing them. And then everybody got mad at the fact that he shut it down. You cannot get upset because God's using something to position you in a place where you can disrupt not only your current status, but everybody that's around you. It's bigger than you. What you're going through is not just about you. God's trying to put you in a place where he can use you to change everything around you. The enemy, he doesn't want you to go into prayer in peace. And so he's assigned people and demons to your space to try to upset your spirit and lock you up so that what's on your life doesn't continue to change culture and upset the principalities and powers and the spiritual wickedness. He wants to stop you from being who God called you to be to dominate the space that you are now called to occupy. And so you cannot, these last couple of days of this year, you cannot fall for the okie doke and allow the enemy to stop your flow. Even though your flow is now forced to flow from a strange space and place. He can't stop your flow even though now you're flowing from a strange place. You can't stop doing who, you can't stop being who God called you to be because now you're in a prison. You can't stop being who God called you to be now because trouble has hit your life. You can't stop being who God called you to be because things ain't the way they used to be. I know your situation ain't going the way you thought it would go. And you're in a cold, uncomfortable, dark place. But you've got to start doing what you've been doing if you weren't in the position you're in now. Tell your neighbor you got to pray through it. 
verse 25, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying. You got to pray through it. This passage of scripture, I told you, is post-scenario of the fact of that Paul cast the spirit out of divination out of a woman. And when he did that, they brought Paul in silence before the rulers and they publicly humiliated them. They publicly beat them and cast them in prison. Can I help you tonight? You cannot allow the disappointment and the pain or the shame to prevent you from calling on God because people are watching and people are listening to see if you really believe what you say you believe. They're watching to see if you really believe that what you believe really works. If you really believe in the miracle worker or you just like singing about it. If you really believe that he's your healer or if you just like singing about it. What happens when you've been stripped and you've been beaten and you've been publicly humiliated and you've been put in a position where now God is your only hope? Who are you? I suggest you do what David did and resort to what you know worse. Psalms 18 and 3 says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. The only way to get through it, the only way to finish strong is to pray through it and then sing through it. Look at verse 25. But about midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang. See, we find it was through prayer and praise that the foundation of the prison was shaken and everyone's bounds were loosed. I am a disruptor. A disruptor is someone or something that completely alters or destroys a structure. What am I saying? If, the, if, if I'm a disruptor, you can put me anywhere and I'm going to shake some stuff and I'm going to tear down some stuff and I'm going to destroy some stuff because where I'm at does not change who I am. If I'm a disruptor in the pulpit, I'm a disruptor in the prison. If I'm a disruptor in the church, I'm a disruptor in the hospital. If I'm a disruptor in the pews, I'm a disruptor in the court. Wherever you put me, I'm going to shake something down. Wherever you put me, I'm going to destroy a structure. Wherever you put me, I'm going to tear something up. Why? Because I am a disruptor. The season that we're entering into calls you to become a disruptor. God needs Paul and Silas all over this world to disrupt the current sound. To disrupt the current state of things. You've got to take your approach to the next level. God is stirring the church. And there is a hunger coming to the church. It's coming back to the church for apostolic power like the apostles had in the book of Acts. And we are going to see revival of supernatural power of God. But we've got to be in position. Because hunger is rising in the earth and it's becoming a magnet that's drawing forth supernatural activity. And God's saying, where are my sons? Where are my daughters? Where are my people that I can put anywhere and they can be who I called them to be? God does nothing by prayer and everything through it. But the time that we're coming into, apostolic and prophetic prayer precedes prophetic promises and manifestation. A time has come upon us where we've got to birth the breakthrough and we've got to do it through prayer and through praise. The manifestation won't come until intercession, travail, and praise birth the breakthrough. Apostolic and prophetic prayer and praise always precedes revival. So if you've got your lazy, tired prayer on, then it ain't going to hit for you. If you've got your lazy, tired praise on, then it ain't going to manifest for you. But where are the people in the room that say, I still got enough power to push through these last 31 days? We've got to enter 
into this apostolic realm to facilitate his government on earth as it is in heaven. We've got to address the powers and principalities and take back what the enemy captured from us. How do we do this? By being in apostolic function because the church is the supernatural engine on the earth. And these next few weeks are key. It's not just the end of a decade, but it's the end of the era. And it's, it's, a, it's a new day where God is establishing a new, fresh grid of faith and power. Not just faith and power, but faith and power that is shaking the powers of darkness and disrupting the works and the frequency of the enemy. There's a divine disruption upon us. And you are at the brink of it. It's starting with you tonight. But here's the thing. The devil wants to keep you in your prayer posture. Because there's only so much you can do on your knees. There's only so much you can do while you're praying. Because your greatest fighting is when you're up on your feet. See, when you pray, it sends signal to the devil that you're still in, in your situation and you don't believe God has released you. But while you're praying and pleading, you're bound by your affairs. But prayer is warfare, but I need you to know that praise is victory. So you can pray, but if you don't ever graduate from your posture of prayer to a place of praise, you won't know victory like God needs you to know victory. You cannot get stuck in your prayer mode, but you've got to release yourself into your praise. I can't stand when people be like, I just can't, I don't know why it takes all of that for people to praise God. You know you're in the room. You talk about people because of the way that they praise. Because you feel like it's ridiculous. And you feel like it's too much. But you don't understand what they had to go through to get to that place of victory. You don't understand that praise releases them into the right atmosphere. You don't understand that praise is their way of overcoming spiritual attacks. You don't understand that you don't fight from victory. You don't fight for victory, but you fight from victory. I praise from a place of victory. My praise is my faith expressing itself audibly. My praise is my voice of faith. My praise says that God has already done it. My praise says that God has already done it. And so I can shout because I believe that it's done. That's why the psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. He said that to let you know, I ain't got to, it ain't got to be always when it's good. And it doesn't have to be always when it's bad. But I will bless the Lord at all times and I will always be praising him. If you commit to pray through it and you commit to sing through it, God told me to tell you that your praise will guarantee you the breakthrough that you need. Let me help you today because this is a worship gathering, right? I want to submit to you singers minstrels, everybody, worshipers, that new songs break old cycles. And check your repertoire. If we've got to the end of 2019 and you don't have a new song in there, you're not breaking any cycles. New songs break old cycles and new sounds break us into new season. A new season is always preceded by a new sound. It's always preceded by a fresh sound. In fact, new movements must be preceded by new songs and sounds. So Josh, Daniel, We've got to release a new sound in this room tonight because as we get ready to enter into a new decade, we've got to see Judah, a new sound from Judah, rise up and go first. Psalms 149 and 6 says, let the, pro the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. If the sound that you're lifting up doesn't have a two-edged sword, you might as well sit down. 
because you're not disrupting anything. The Bible says that, and a two-edged sword in their hand to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters or irons. If my praise, it comes forth like that, if it can bind up kings, then it can loose people. Psalms 100 says, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. As we come before his presence with singing, something liberating happens in your mind. Something liberating happens in people's bodies and in their soul. It's through praise that God's power is activated on our behalf. There's a supernatural power that is released in praise that alters both the physical and non-physical realm. That shifts everything when released. You thought you was just playing church songs. And singing church music. No, 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 no. You are a disruptor. And every time you release praise, you alter the physical and non-physical realm. And you have the authority and the ability to shift everything. Do you hear me? That ought to make you take what you do a little more serious. Because every time I open up my mouth, something is shifting. Every time I open up my mouth, I might not see it, but it's shifting. I might not feel it yet, but I'm shifting. Why? Because God has placed me here with an activated power that's supernatural to release something in the atmosphere. Josh, sound is an amazing force. Let's talk about science. We are continually in the presence of ultrasonic and subsonic sound waves. Ultra means above, beyond. Okay. Are waves above our threshold of hearing. And sub means beneath. These waves are beneath our thresholds of hearing. So sound It's always going on. Whether you can hear it or not, there is something above you and there's something underneath you. Now listen, science confirms that every created thing is made up of sound waves. It's made up of sound waves that are constantly spinning at different intervals. I'm going to say that again. Science confirms that every created thing is made up of sound waves that are constantly spinning at different intervals, forming objects in matter of various densities, both small and great. Stay with me. You need to understand sound as power. That when cranked up, to a certain level of frequency. It can break, it can crush, and it can transform anything within its surroundings. Sound is wavelengths that move vibration and is a power that has substance. (laughs) Can we pause? I'm telling you what science says. But I want to tell you scripturally, if the sound that you're releasing has no substance, nothing is moving. You are responsible for the space that God puts you in to release substance, to move, change, break, destroy, and release whatever God has positioned you to do. And you come to rehearsal and don't know your music. Show up to the service playing the wrong keys. Wrong keys open up wrong portals. Sound is wavelengths that move by vibration and is the power that has substance. Tell your neighbor, get some substance. Not only that, sound has the ability to affect Whatever form it comes into contact with, by exposing that form to a different weight of a different rate of frequency vibration.
celebration. <laughs> what does that mean? If I need to change, it, what does that mean to the text? If Paul and Silas had the revelation of sound, that all they had to do was release substance. At that moment, everybody's life was disrupted. Here's the amazing thing about the text. They didn't even have to join in. Let me help you worship leaders. Stop fussing at us to clap our hands and sing the song with you and stop fussing at the people to jump up and jump down and run laps. Do your job and change the frequency of the atmosphere. The Bible says, the Bible says, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. Put the scripture up. Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises, right? Unto God. Did it say, they said, come on and clap your hands, everybody? Did it say, I need you to lift your shout? It said, read it. The prisoners heard them. Y'all see that? I didn't make it up. And the what? Tell your neighbor, do your job. Because what Paul and Silas did was expose them to a form of a different weight, a, a different rate of frequency vibration. They created an environment for an encounter full of faith and expectancy. And we've got to understand that every attitude carries its own power and vibration, which is recognizable in the realm of the spirit. It's not just your little funky attitude. Officer said, he always tell me I can act like this is my church, so... I'm not fussing at y'all. I just want you to understand. We don't have time for you to come into the sanctuary trying to decide if you want to lead us into the presence of God. We don't have time for your little attitude about how you feeling at the moment. Change the frequency. Change the atmosphere. Change the environment. Change the environment for an encounter, release, faith, and expectancy. It's not just an attitude. It is a force that wraps itself around a person like a coat that constantly pulls a person deeper into its power until they are completely overtaken by it, whether it's good or bad. Every attitude we release is filled with powerful vibrations. Wrapping themselves around us like a garment further enveloping us into a cocoon-like power. That's why the Bible says, in Isaiah 61 and 3, Overseer Freddie, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. He gave you a remedy for your attitude. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness because he understood that powerful vibrations wrap themselves around you like a garment. The garment of praise is not just a covering. It's a wrap. It's more than just a piece of cloth or clothing that is thrown over your shoulder. It literally means or teaches us to wrap and cover ourselves until the garment leaves no cracks or openings through which hostile elements can penetrate. The garment of praise repels and replaces the spirit of heaviness. It makes us free from the fainting spirit. So those of you who felt like giving up, you've got to wrap yourself in praise. Those of you that felt like quitting and like throwing in the towel and going back to who you used to be, I say pray through it and sing through it. And God told me to tell you that your praise will guarantee you the breakthrough that you need. 
we're going to do some work tonight. Not only did he say, do you need to pray through it and sing through it? Now, I didn't give you the scientific breakdown of sound. Do you got it? Do you relate it with the garment of praise? So now we've got to break through it. So, verse 26, and suddenly there came a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison house were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were unfastened. I just want to know if God can count on you tonight to disrupt your role to release the breaker to everybody on your row. You don't need them to participate with you. They just need to hear your sound. If you're in here and you are one of the ones that are of Paul and Silas, I need you to make some noise in this atmosphere that is full of substance and faith and expectancy that can free everybody on your row. It has nothing to do with how you feel. It has nothing to do with what you got going on. It has everything to do with who God called you to be. Where are the Paul and the Silas's that will release the breaker into the room? Where or the Paul and Silas that will change the frequency of, uh, uh, of the atmosphere of, of the section that you in. Where are the Paul and Silas that will change the frequency on your own? Where are the Paul and Silas that will disrupt and change everything in the structure? If you're in here, I need to hear you. That was your church shout. If sound has the ability to change the frequency, that means the power to heal cancer is in my mouth. It's in your fingers. It's in your shout. I don't need your church shout in this moment. I need the disruptor you to arise. And I need, I, I, I need you to think about what could be needed on your row and then begin to make well of his name in this atmosphere right where you are right now. I need you to open your mouth and begin to declare his name in this room. I need you to begin to declare who he is in this room. I need you to begin to declare his word in this room. I need you to disrupt your row. I need you to disrupt your world. If we're gonna break through it, then you're gonna have to do your job as the disruptor. Forget about what's going on around you. Forget about how you look and how you feel. Get the revelation in your spirit. I am God's anointed in the earth realm. I release glory in the earth realm. I have supernatural power to change structures, to destroy structures. I can change the frequency in this whole room. Everybody can leave out of here heal. I can change the frequency in this whole room and everybody leave out of here with a breakthrough. I can change the frequency in this whole room and everybody leave here with joy. Somebody open your mouth and release your voice and change the frequency. Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say neighbor, the breaker is here. Second Corinthians 3 and 17 says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The breaker is here and he's in me. See, they don't know who they were sitting next to tonight. They thought you was just a regular old person. No, no, I, I host the breaker. I host the breaker's anointing. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And he's here to break you through it. The breaker is here and he's shaking up things that shook you up. Your prayers and your praise have provoked the presence of God and he's here to break you through. And I heard the Lord say your praise is breaking the sound barrier. And that's why you can't be cute with what you release in the next 15 minutes because your praise is breaking the sound barrier. I don't know what had you boxed in. I don't know what had you locked up. I don't, have, I don't know what had you shut in. But open your mouth and release your praise and break the sound barrier. Shaking as you open up your mouth. Go. 
position you in the eyes of people who have locked you up. He's sending an earthquake to reposition you in the eyes of people who've been holding you hostage. He's using you, he's using you, and he's shaking you. And the shaking that's going on right now, the praise that's coming out of your mouth right now, is going to cause all the doors to come open. It's going to cause you to walk in a level of freedom and authority that you've never walked in. Somebody open your mouth and release your praise in the room. Hold on. One more thing. Not only did the prayer and the praise change the frequency that changed the structure of the place in which the men of God were held hostage for doing what God called them to do. But the minute they released the praise overseer, doors started opening and chains started falling and I prophesy into this atmosphere tonight that as you lose yourself in praise that doors are opening and chains are falling I prophesy that doors are opening and chains are falling I prophesy that doors are opening and chains are falling what am I talking about unmovable barriers that used to be closed are starting to open and chains that that are going on and that's restrained you are being released and breaking off of you God is doing something in this room and he's shaking the power of darkness and disrupting the works and the frequency of the enemy. If you would lend your voice to the atmosphere, God is releasing a new frequency in the earth and it's coming straight from heaven. The frequency is hitting your spirit and it is causing your body to react. Throw your hands up and open your mouth and release your praise in the room. I want you to get you a good neighbor. I want you to get you a good neighbor. Somebody that can be your Paul or your Silas, whoever you gonna be. <laughs> Grab them by the arm. And bring them to the altar. Yeah, you're gonna have to get out your comfort zone. And you're gonna have to get out of your space to walk in this new grace and this new power that God is releasing for this new decade and this new dimension. Don't bring just the person that's sitting next to you because you can't play with your praise tonight. You got to bring somebody you can count on to release chains and open up doors. God is saying, y'all go too. Y'all go. Y'all go together. <laughs> Come here, Chris. You're going to step in for these Pauls and Silas. Y'all come on. We, we thank you for your sound, but we're going to need your sound over here. Because God is so loving that he has not forgot about you. See, the minstrels always are in position and always working, but sometimes you got to remember they need the breaker too. Yes, there are times when God wants them to minister through their instrument, but there are other times when they got to activate the other sound so that God can download a fresh sound in their mind. You got a good partner? Ask him, can I count on you with your praise tonight? Wait for an answer. If they give you that church nod, mm-mm, mm-mm. Put me in a crazy flow, change the key, and put me in a minor somewhere. Now listen, I'm going to go upbeat. All you have tonight is your voice, okay? All you have is your praise. And there is a strong prophetic praise in your mouth 
that must be released in this place tonight. This prophetic cry is going to trigger a series of events that will open the door to something supernatural in your life. That's why you can't play with your praise tonight and you can't play with your neighbor tonight because this praise is not just for you, but it's for the person that you're linked to. God says, the key to the next ram is your praise. And you can't allow what you're dealing with to rob you of your ability to war with your praise tonight. The next phase of your life, Jehovah Shalom will dominate your existence. And the peace of God will help you to stay sober and help you to keep your mind in the right place. Praise is taking you into your next chapter. Praise is taking you into your next decade. You may have closed this last chapter with tears, but this new chapter is opening with praise tonight. I stopped by to tell you that God is turning things around for you and that you're right on schedule for a divine disruption. Open up your mouth and trigger a series of events in this room. Come on and lift your voice. Come on and lift your voice. Come on, break it with your praise. 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 Come on, push past your emotion. Push past your pain. Push past your feeling. Come on, use your praise to break it. Come on, use your praise to disrupt it. Come on, use your voice to crush it. Come on, use your voice to destroy it. Come on, use your voice. 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 Come on, that's it. Come on, that's it. While you're praising him, pages are turning. While you're praising him, doors are opening. While you're praising him, chains are falling. While you're praising him, the anointing is increasing. While you're praising him, chains are breaking. Yokes are being destroyed. While you're praising him right now, angels are being activated. Come on and use your voice. Come on, use your voice tonight. I came to crush that which is trying to crush me. I came to destroy that which is trying to destroy me. I came to disrupt that which is trying to disrupt me. The power of God in this room is crushing that which is trying to crush you. As you lift up your voices, you're penetrating the atmosphere and we speak to the elements we speak to the elements and we make the world in which we live in conducive for the power of God to crush and break come on just a few more minutes come on just a few more minutes you're not tired the devil's been wearing you out all year long trials of life has been wearing you out all year long this is your push this is how you finish strong this is how you start strong use your voice tonight use your voice tonight to crush depression use your voice tonight to crush suicide use your voice tonight to crush oppression use your voice tonight to crush sickness use your voice tonight to crush infirmity use your voice tonight to crush darkness use your voice tonight to crush discouragement use your voice tonight to crush rejection use your voice tonight to crush identity theft Use your voice tonight to crush power, to press, to crush poverty. Come on, sing till it breaks. Come on, call his name until it breaks. Come on, praise his name until it breaks. The power of God will prevail. 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 Will prevail. Do your job tonight. Do your job for your neighbor. Do your job for your neighbor. Neighbor, this praise is for you. Neighbor,
neighbor, this praise is for you. Neighbor, this shout is for you. Somebody open up your mouth and break through for your neighbor. Open your mouth and break through for your neighbor. Come on, this praise is not for you. This is for your neighbor. This one's for your neighbor. They need you to do your job and disrupt their frequency. They need you to do your job and disrupt their sound. Open your mouth. it crush it destroy it break through it move it come on use your voice use your voice use your voice use your voice use your voice, use your voice, use your voice. angels are being activated use your voice healing is being released use your voice deliverance is being loose use your your neighbor go what just happened was for your neighbor let their hands go you came into agreement for disruption for your neighbor the next 60 seconds are for you I don't care I don't know I don't really care how you do it. But I need you to go for broke for your own self and release the breaker to break you out. Nobody knows like you know what's been holding you hostage. I'm not gonna count you down. You're mature enough to go on your own. I'm just gonna tell you to let your neighbor go and go for yourself. Come on, this one's for you. This one is for you. Let's set a flow in this room. 
that pushes us and propels us forward into the new decade. That's release a new sound in the room that changes everything that's going on around us. Let's set a new flow in the house today that sets us up for the next 10 years of our lives. Come on, open up your mouth and put us somewhere that can allow the power of God to prevail in our lives. Open up your mouth. Come on, open up your mouth. Come on, open up your mouth. Come on, open up your mouth. This one is for you. This one is about you. This one is about your life. This one is about your life. Come on, put us in the flow. us in the flow. This one is for you. Let's release a new sound. Come on, let's release a new sound. Let's release a new sound.
shaking for the glory. Has a shake. There's a shaking for the glory. For the glory. Has a shake. Release me. Part tonight. My God was moving a moment ago. I clearly heard him say that he needed us to release a sound tonight to disrupt some things on behalf of the pastors who are in the room tonight. 